I do like that new electronic smell. You know what I'm talking about? New electronics and they get warm, they're like. What's up everyone, Jay's Two Cents here and I've been asked an awful lot lately about ultra wide panels and whether or not they're worth it and how much graphics card you actually need to power a 3440 by 1440, 4.9 million pixel behemoth like this. This is actually the Vast Monitor. It's a mass drop right now. You guys can find the link to the drop down below. We will be doing a standalone review of this monitor after we spend some time with it. But one of the things I wanna to do to kinda of get you know acquainted with it is we're gonna see exactly how much graphics power you really need to run nearly five million pixels. Today's video sponsor is Dashlane, and you should definitely take your online security serious, especially in 2018. Everyone is out to get you. Now, usually you would just make a very complex password, but then trying to remember it or write it down somewhere and lose it, is that's not ideal either. So Dashlane is a perfect solution to keep yourself secure and keep your passwords complex. Dashlane has a built-in password auditor that will also tell you if you're using any duplicate passwords because using duplicates is also just asking for trouble. Now you can keep very long complex passwords with their password generator and I keep everything secure by using my fingerprint here on my mobile device, but it will sync between all your mobile devices, iOS, Android, and your internet web browsers, giving you one login on any device to be able to access all of your passwords. But Dashlane isn't just about passwords, it's about keeping any sensitive information safe and at your fingertips. You can grant access to family members, you can even keep payment information and bank information in here, making it easy to manage all of your accounts when on the go. So what are you guys waiting for? Start taking your online security serious by getting Dashlane for free using the link in the description below. But if you also start your free account today, you get a free month of Dashlane Premium. Now it's no joke that graphics card prices still suck and they're gonna suck for a while, unfortunately. But you know what pricing has improved on? Panels, you can actually get a panel like this now, a 35 inch 3440 by 1440p panel, 100 hertz, for 599 bucks. But we'll do a standalone video on this, like I mentioned later on, so stay tuned for that. But if you wanna learn more about it, link is in the description below. But I'm kinda of curious, I get a lot of messages from people asking me if ultra wide, wide is worth it. It's hard to say all, all, all 12 wide, it's like Elmer Fudd. But is it worth it? How much graphics power do you really need? I mean, after all, this has over 25.5% more pixels than a standard 16 by nine aspect ratio when you stretch it out to 21 by nine. But you know, there are some gaming advantages to this. You get more real estate in terms of view, more view angle when it comes to games. Shooters have not been the same for me since going to ultra wide. They, it is amazing to have that extra periphery, peripheral views. Why can't I say that word? Peripheral, peripheral. You can see more. <laughs> so it got me thinking, I've never actually tested an ultra wide panel with lower end entry level GPUs simply because you usually with this much pixel power or this many pixels, you need more power. So what we're gonna do today, we are gonna start at like the lowly 1050. And we'll see at like high settings, we'll go with high, not the highest, not the lowest, a little high, like right in the middle. And we'll see exactly where the sweet spot is. Where do you actually get the 60 FPS average? So the benchmark I'm gonna be using for this is Metro Last Light. I think it's a very well-rounded title. It's still somewhat demanding. And I think it represents pretty well the middle ground. And all the benchmarks I've ever done, I leave Last Light in there simply because it seems to be tough to run, but realistic, where you get these benchmarks built into games and the benchmark looks great, but then you get into the game and it's trash. I found that Redux or Metro Last Light is pretty middle ground on a very consistent uh, benchmark when it comes to realistic performance. So we're just gonna, we're gonna go through all these tests, put together some charts, and we're gonna find out exactly where the sweet spot is. Transition. Okay, so we ran 10 different graphics cards on the Metro Last Light benchmark, like I said. Now, before you guys start yelling at me that I should have done more tests, what we're kind of expecting as we do other games, it's gonna slide up and down just like this. So what I'm more or less interested in is what the gap is between cards when running a resolution like this, rather than what's the actual number you're getting when running a specific game with this resolution with specific settings, because then there's an endless amount of combos that we could do to try and mix and match those results. So that's why we're running the high preset, not the very high preset, no super sampling, because this resolution doesn't necessarily need super sampling, although MSA 2X or MSAA 2X would give you a little bit sharper image. Once you go high resolutions like this, MSAA is a little bit less of a factor, but it uh, doesn't hit you as hard when you can get away with turning it off. So that's why we didn't run it in this. And then of course, motion blur and tessellation at normal, just because we wanna add some load to the cards 
to see what happens. Now, the sweet spot, right around 60 FPS, um, kind of surprised, the 1066G was uh, an average of 64.98 FPS, so 65 FPS. Our 970 super clocked, or super super clocked from EVGA, gave us an average of 60.72, and then on the AMD side, it looks like right around an RX 580 at 59 FPS average is uh, kind of where the sweet spot is. No, no surprise, something older but still a beast like a 980 Ti was able to give us a you know nearly 90 FPS. Obviously 1080 Ti, 142 FPS. It, it should smash a benchmark like this. Uh, but the results were, were pretty linear. I mean, as the card scaled up, you saw a pretty significant jump in performance and that's pretty much what was expected. Now you could obviously, based on various titles, if you, if you run another title that's more demanding, like maybe Rise of the Tomb Raider is still somewhat demanding and optimization is questionable, but you can obviously play with your settings to try and see you know, how much more FPS you can get out of it. I mean, obviously that 60 FPS number is what we strive for as gamers. But the nice thing about this resolution is it obviously gives you a massive viewing angle in your games. Shooters, you have more of a peripheral, I guess, I actually said it right that time. Uh, but even MOBAs and games like World of Warcraft, you have so much viewable play area. So it's obviously gonna be a subjective thing though, whether or not you want that extra width or if you just want more of a hyper-focused, you know, regular size screen. Because I will admit, as you go up to like the 34 or 35 inch ultra wides, what I kind of noticed happening in especially games like World of Warcraft is things that are off to the side of the monitor, you kind of have to turn your head a bit to see it and it takes some getting used to. And you might find yourself when you switch to like a, an FPS, finding yourself getting killed from the sides more than you did before, simply because you're distracted by sort of what's going on. So you kind of focus off to the right side of the screen, the left side goes way out of focus, and suddenly you're missing enemies there, where on a standard 16 by nine, or even a smaller like 24 or 27 inch panel, you, are ha you have a more you know, focus tunnel vision on the entire screen. So that's why ultra wides are still one of those things. It's kind of like a love it or hate it. Obviously, if you're using professional workflow or editing timelines like we are, or lots of documents and, and professional workspace, then having the extra screen real estate is amazing. That's why I run two ultra wides on my editing rig. But anyway, guys, this is kind of a quick video. I, I, I've been asked this all the time about what is the resolution like in ultra wide? How much power does it really take to run a screen like that or drive a screen like that? And uh, this was just kind of a scratching the surface of what's possible with this, but I think you guys can see you don't need necessarily a super high-end card to run it. The, the higher, the better, obviously. But you can get away with some pretty frugal cards on a screen like this if you drop some of the settings. Anyway, I'm willing to revisit this test with more titles if you guys give me some suggestions. The problem is that a lot of titles that don't have built-in benchmarks are hard to get consistent tests with, but then again, built-in benchmarks are oftentimes a little misleading because they're less demanding than the actual game itself. Like the Assassin's Creed benchmark is not as hard to run as the actual game. It's unfortunate. So I'm reaching out to you guys on titles that you think would be relevant on testing stuff like this, maybe moving forward with like Fortnite or something like that. But I'm gonna go, thanks for watching. And as always, guys, I will see you in the next one.